one of the worst parts of being a data scientist. To data science or not to data science and to build software instead. I'm not gonna tell you which one I chose. I know you're dying to find out, but you're just gonna have to live with the mystery. Turns out I had a lot more to say about this topic than I thought I would. So there will be a part two of this video dropping next week where I discuss and compare everything about breaking into each career, whether you're starting from scratch or transitioning in from a different background, including the hiring process and the interview process for each one. So stay tuned for that. This video that you're watching right now, however, part one, will focus on the similarities and differences between the two careers themselves. And this will be broken down into what it's like to work in each one, salary information, and finally the job landscape and the long-term job security for each one. But Damsel and Data, what gives you the right to share your humble opinion on this topic? If you haven't guessed it yet, if you haven't cracked the code, I'm a data scientist, hello. I've also had extremely high exposure to software engineering through minoring in computer science, interviewing for software engineering positions, which I did not receive offers for, hiring and managing software engineering co-op students, and working very closely every day with software engineers, both at work, at my job, and in my personal life with many of my loved ones being certified coding cuties. All right, so do you trust me now? Great, neither do I, let's dive in. Starting with what it's like working as a software engineer versus a data scientist. I cannot tell if this is straight. Someone's gonna come for me in the comments and say, hey, Tim's on data, please fix your filming setup. In both of these roles, you'll be spending hopefully most of your time designing solutions to technical and business problems and implementing them through code. This includes reading, documenting, and testing code as well. Next, each role will entail a combination of time spent working independently on projects and time spent collaborating with other humans. The collaboration component will happen through attending meetings, answering messages and emails, and contributing to written assets like documentation and presentations. The independent work will consist of long, uninterrupted periods of heavy focus to try to concentrate on solving the often complex tasks at hand. Finally, both jobs can be done either in person or remotely, so there is a ton of range and flexibility in the work-life balance depending on the specific role that you end up in. All right, now I know what you really want is some smack talk, so now let's start with some differences between the two in the form of pros and cons. Starting off with some positivity, a strong pro that I see for software engineering is that it's more concrete, predictable, and defined as a role, which can be very satisfying to the person doing the work. Here's what I mean by this. Let's say you have a task, creating a web page for a visitor to make a payment. With this task, you can break it down into components, reasonably estimate how long each component will take, do the work, and then know how it's going to be used once it's complete. Of course, sometimes we have bumps in the road and we run into things where it doesn't always go according to the way we planned. This happens in every job. It happens in software engineering, I would say about as much as it happens in every other job. As a contrast, this is where I introduced one of the worst parts of being a data scientist. And this is that data science work is extremely wishy-washy. And by that I mean ambiguous and loaded with uncertainty. The nature of data science is being a detective. It's about applying methods to pull information out of data and put it to use somehow. I always say it's more of an art than a science because we never really know how successful our attempts to do this will be until we actually try them. So with data science, it's extremely common to put in a lot of time and effort into something and end up with a result that doesn't accomplish anything except telling us what didn't work. You have to be okay with this as a data scientist. You have to be okay with uncertainty. You have to be okay with your work not always materializing into direct business impact. And you have to be okay with outcomes that don't always turn out the way you hoped or expected them to. And this includes breaking the bad news to the stakeholders when the data tells us something that they don't wanna hear. Now this next one can be a pro or a con for data science depending on your preference. But another difference is that data science roles tend to be more integrated into the business than software engineering roles. The purpose of data science is pulling information out of data in some way, right? 
So of course this information is going to some stakeholders. Because of the need for collaboration and the inevitable back and forth that will come from multiple iterations of trying to get the stakeholders what they're looking for, you will likely see your calendar fill up with meeting invites faster than you can say antisocial. I don't like meetings. But again, this can be a pro if you're someone who loves collaboration and working directly with others, it's great. It's also definitely great if you plan on working your way up the corporate ladder and you have aspirations of pursuing leadership within the company. The business focused nature of data science allows you to gain exposure to the leadership team and a wide breadth of other roles at the company. Your data discoveries getting shared out carves out many opportunities for you to gain recognition, promotions, and also have a lot of exposure to networking and learning from other people. Because of this, communication skills are absolutely crucial for data science. And you need to know how to effectively communicate with everyone, not just other data scientists and software engineers who speak nerd. If you do not have these skills, you may survive, but you will not thrive as a data scientist, meaning it will be hard to advance in your career. With software engineering, there's more opportunity to find something with a higher percentage of time spent working independently because there are software engineering roles out there that revolve less around establishing goals and communicating findings and more about just executing, executing on writing the code. This isn't really the case for data science. There aren't really data science roles out there, at least that I've been exposed to, that just revolve around writing code. So if it's important to you to maximize the amount of time that you're writing code, you're more likely to find that in software engineering. If you want a mix of both writing code and business involvement, then you can find that in either data science or software engineering, but pretty much every data science role will give you a balance with those two things. All right, now as a data scientist, I don't have as many cons for software engineering. Of course, there's many other YouTubers out there that actually work as software engineers that have videos like this up, so I encourage you to check those out. But I will say that my first tech internship involved front-end web development, and I realized that this is just a small slice of software engineering, but this experience is what ultimately led me to choose data science over a software role. If you're familiar with my content, you'll know that I majored in math and I make it my whole personality. And I found that at least for web development, you really don't use math at all in a direct way. My take is that this generalizes pretty well across most software roles. You do use the same thinking and problem solving skills that you learn as you study math, but you're never really applying math in a direct way, besides in rare instances where some math knowledge could be you know, useful. Personally, I wanted a job where I could witness the magic of math on a daily basis, and data science gives you that. You're directly using data science. <laughs> I'm going to plug my math for data science video here where you can learn everything about this topic if you care. And if you don't care for a math monologue, I'll spare you and gently suggest that you should probably go into software engineering. The only other con I'll give you about software engineering, and this is a big one, is that it involves on-call responsibilities a lot of the time. If you're working on an active product with a user base, there is a good likelihood good likelihood, high likelihood, there's a good chance that you'll have some level of obligation to spend time on call as a software engineer. This means being available potentially outside of your regular working hours in case something goes wrong and repairing critical internal tech or user facing issues that may happen. I've never heard of any on call obligations for a data science role, so it's possible that it exists, but if it does exist, it's rare, as opposed to being extremely common for software engineering roles, especially at tech companies. This can be stressful. I've never personally had to do it, but I have witnessed many colleagues and close friends do it, and it can definitely have the potential to disrupt your work-life balance and your serotonin levels, so keep that in mind. All right, let's talk money, honey. First off, I'm gonna start by saying, if you plan on making this particular career decision based off of which one you can make more money with, don't. Two reasons. First off, the money-making opportunity with data science and software engineering is in the same ballpark. There isn't a huge difference, so it's silly to split hairs by determining your fate based on this. Second, what's the point of making more money if you're spending your days and your time doing something that you don't really enjoy? You can always make more money, but you can never get your time back. So if all other factors are equal, Base your decision off of the type of work that will make you enjoy your time spent as much as possible, rather than the type of work that'll make you marginally more moolah that you probably won't even notice in the long run. 
All right, now that that's out of the way, software engineers make more. <laughs> Generally speaking, software engineers tend to earn slightly more than data scientists on average. I love using levels.fyi as a source here because you can compare salaries across very specific attributes like the city, your country that you're looking to work in, uh, the company, the specific job title, the level, etc. It's great. Here I'm using it to compare the median total compensation in USD across data scientists and software engineers. And you can see that while the career progression is really quite similar and the amounts don't vary too much, ultimately software engineering is slightly more lucrative. Lots of juicy information here, so I encourage you to explore the site and find the details most relevant to you. As far as job availability is concerned, both data science and software engineering are relatively abundant for the pool of qualified candidates when compared to other jobs. There are definitely more software engineering jobs out there, but also a larger pool of candidates applying to them. This is partly due to the lower barrier to entry for software engineering with alternative education paths generating more qualified candidates in the eyes of the employer when compared to data science. And this is something I'm diving into in the part two of this video. So make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss it. But the other reason that there are more software engineering candidates and also more jobs is that it's just a more mature career. Data scientist is still a title that's a huge mystery to many, many people. Please just usher them over to my channel. Thanks in advance. Software engineering, on the other hand, is a term that everyone has heard of, representing a wider field with so many opportunities and subspecializations. Front end, back end, full stack, app developers, web developers, game developers, data engineers, system architects. Data jobs in general are still more of a black box to both employers and especially job seekers. There is also a slightly higher barrier to entry, so the number of potential suitors is lower, but for a lower number of eligible, suits. I'm sure there's actually a data-driven way to find the exact ratio of opportunities to job applicants for each one and compare, but I am a lazy data scientist and I did not complete this exercise. My gut instinct tells me that it's about the same ratio. If you can prove me wrong, please feel free to do so in the comments. We love being challenged here. As for the future, my prediction is that there will always be slightly more opportunities for software engineers, even after data scientists does become a household term. This is because in most cases, software engineers are builders and data scientists are optimizers. Even if you're a data scientist who builds models, most predictive and descriptive models exist for the purpose of optimizing some business decision or a product. What's more crucial to a company? building the thing or optimizing the thing. You guessed it, building the thing is probably more crucial. There's still a lot of teams out there that don't prioritize optimizing their decisions that they make. And really this is what data scientists do. All right, now I wouldn't be able to end off this section without looping in our good friend, AI. How will AI advancements affect each career? Well, we can't say for sure, but my take is that only the strongest will survive in any career, not just data science or software engineering. The more repetitive or predictable roles in each career will slowly begin to disappear as we can automate more and more. What will last? Roles requiring heavy soft skills combined with technical know-how. Desirable candidates will be people who are pleasant to work with, have vast creativity, deep thinking and problem solving skills, and the open-mindedness and domain knowledge to be able to interpret complicated results and put together elaborate solutions to elaborate problems. Roles like this exist in both data science and software engineering, so I don't personally have any evidence to say that one will dwindle away more than the other in the future. Remember, this is simply a prediction. I am a data scientist, I am not a clairvoyant. At the end of the day, it's about what your interests are. Do you like to tackle a mess of data and apply mathematical techniques, experimenting to try to pull something useful out of it? Are you okay with the uncertainty that comes from the tinkering that is your job? Do you enjoy communicating complicated ideas simply and frequently and clearly? If you answered mostly yes, data science is probably a great pick for you. On the other hand, do you enjoy building from the ground up 
iterating and testing as you go until you have a full product? Are you okay with being available to fix things in high pressure situations from time to time? Do you just love to code? Then software engineering is a great pick for you. If you're watching this video, you're probably on a spectrum. So you probably have a bit of both sides of interests. In that case, I encourage you to keep in mind that there are very hybrid roles out there for that. You can be a software engineer at an AI company. You can be a machine learning engineer, or you can be a data scientist on a team that doesn't have any software engineers or vice versa. And I assure you, you will be wearing both hats in that case. My final tip for you, if you can't decide, is to just try both if you can. For students or recent grads, internships are a great way to get a taste of multiple careers. That's personally what I did and I recommend it to everyone. And otherwise, you can always prioritize choosing a role on a team that would allow you to work closely with the other role. Or you can work at a company where they hire both. So whichever role you start out with, there's always that opportunity to switch it around later. I've personally witnessed many people pivot between software engineering and data science. There are so many transferable skills between the two that it makes it really easy to do so. So don't sweat the decision too much. It's really not that serious. If you made it to the end of this video, congratulations, you have stamina. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so we can add more coding cuties to this chaotic club. I will catch you in the comments if you have questions or future video suggestions. Otherwise, I will see you in part two next week. Have a datalicious day and thanks for watching. Bye.